Hey everybody, I just thought I would say hello, make sure this thing's working. Okay, it appears to be um, great, awesome. Yeah, so I just um, working on a bunch of stuff um, for the free workshop and I've been, uh, you know, so as I'm working on this, uh, there's, there's all this information and so, I thought I would share a little bit about, um, you know, what I was working on yesterday, because I think it could be really helpful uh, for, for you guys. Um, uh, so this, what I'm going to share with you is some questions, uh, some questions around getting clarity about what your art and what your art is doing and how to improve it. And I'll tell you a little story about what happened to me. And the reason this comes up and I was reviewing this is because it was the same time, um, the same time of year, a couple of years ago, this is the time of year when we do our creative visionary program, which, um, you know, it basically goes from like, you know, March to June, it's like a three month course. And, uh, one of the things that keeps me really fired up about, uh, teaching, um, that I need to do is I have to, in order to do this, I have to be making art um, when I'm teaching. For, for, you know, I just, it's just something I've always, I've always done when I go to teach workshops, I have to be involved in it. Um, it's weird, it just kind of dies for me if I'm not, that's where all the ideas come from. I just, I just have to be doing it myself. It's, it's the weirdest thing. And so, um, one of the things that uh, when I did CVP, um, you know, the first couple times, it became it was a it was really a big deal, and and it was just taking so much of my time, and I got really into it, and I noticed that uh, I didn't have time while that was going to make my art, um, um, and so. What happened was, I'm just making sure this thing's, hey Judy, so, um, so I, I just kept going um, and, and after a couple of weeks I was struggling with the teaching part of it. Um, it was just, I just felt kind of lackluster and I realized I had to go back in, I had to, I always have to be making art, right? I always have to be making art, but, and, and it was like, and I, but I didn't, you know, it's like, well, how can I do this teaching thing? And if I can't do my art, like that's going to be a problem, you know, and I know CVP, it, it's an intensive program and everything. So it wasn't all year, but I was like, God, I don't, I don't, I need to be able to do my art. So I thought to myself, how, how can I make my work and do this really crazy thing where I'm, you know, doing these group calls and, and helping people and talking about other people's work so much, how can I make my art? And so what I did is I, I thought, well, I need to get, I need to get more clear about, about what I'm doing. And, and so when I go into the studio, I mean, I don't have all Saturday anymore. I just had a couple hours. So I thought to myself, how, how can I do this? How can I make my time more? Um, how can I progress? <laughs> you know, how can I make the time more useful, you know, be more efficient with it? Um, let me just say hi to you guys. Hey, Judy, Rui, nice to see you here. Patrice, Karen. Amanda, nice to see you. Um, yeah, so so in a way, this crazy busy thing that I got involved and CVP grew and got a, to be a bigger part of my life and we had so many people in it the first couple of years and um, it forced me to get more clear about what I was doing <laughs> when I was making art. And I'll share with you now the questions that I kind of came up with to help myself. And then these questions, I started teaching them kind of, you know, and it became kind of part of the curriculum. And that was the, the aha moment for me that, you know, me teaching is really supplemented by me making art. I need to be doing them. I need to always be making art. I'm always going to be making art. Like there's no, there's nothing that I always have to do that. Um, so it ended up helping this challenge ended up helping, um, the program and it helped me a lot and it gave me insight and I did get, um, 
that year, I, my, my work shifted a lot. And ever since then, I've been kind of using this. And every time around this year, as things get busier, especially in like, I've got the free workshop coming and all this stuff, um, I'm busy with it, but I have to also be, keep making my art. So I'm always revisiting this. So I thought I'd share these um, questions with you that I have used. And so the first one um, is I lay out my work and you know, and I can do it even on Instagram. I don't even need to like be in my studio. I can just look at the last, you know, three months of work. It's better if you have some work around, you know, put it out and look at what you've made in the past, look what you've been doing and kind of review it. And then look at and write down what parts, what's working, what parts are, are working. I mean, I'm, this is what I'm doing like right now. I was doing this and I was actually talking to a friend last night because he, he's been following my work a long time and he's an artist, but he was, I was telling him the parts that I think is working and he was telling me what, you know, he was kind of agreeing with me, which is kind of cool, but he was articulating it. But you need to get a hold of what's working. What what is it that you've been making that's working? Um, and um, <clears throat> and so when you get clear on that, and seriously, like write it down. You know. So for me right now, what's working is this state of, um, and it has to do with how I'm working. And this is just me. You know. Sometimes it's like what's working is the color or whatever. It depends what you're doing. But for me right now, there's this way I've been working where, and it's usually in the beginning phases of the painting, where I'm uh, really very intuitive. I mean, really more intuitive and more sort of spacious in my approach. It's kind of scary in a way. I mean, it's really, it's really free. And I'm getting some cool shifts because of that. And so that's something that's on my list right here. Um, that's something that I want to stay in that because I'm seeing in the paintings where I'm doing that, it's, I'm getting results from it. There's, it's, the work's changing, you know? Um, and my friend Steve last night was saying, those are the ones that he's really excited about. And he's like, God, dude, this is really changing. You know, like that's, that's so much more, um, there's, there's a wildness about that. And, and I was telling him why it's like that, you know? So anyway, so that's written down on it. Um, for me, the, it's color. Um, starting when, the, letting the colors, and this happened quite by accident, that the oil pastels that I'm using, they only come in these pretty garish, um, really bright colors. So that's what I'm using in the beginning but I'm kind of liking it. It's pushing me. So continuing with that, where I'm being more raw with the colors, it's weird. And this is so not like me. Um, but anyway, those are a couple examples of things that I'm going to use moving forward. Um, okay. Um, wow. Lots of people here. Hi, Jennifer, Amanda, um, Tona. Nice to see you here. Um, <laughs> great. Sujeta. Great. Um, okay, so so that so that's that 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 sort of like what's working. Review what's working. The second thing is think about how those things that you've pointed out. For me, it's like this: what's this wildness thing going on? This color thing. How does that relate to who you are? You know, why <clears throat> why are you the person who's making the art? What this does is, it can, and, and think about it, you know, like I'm in a pretty, um, you know, I, I, I haven't been traveling. I have, I've just been staying put. So it makes sense that this part of myself, this more wild, like adventurous side of my part self wants to come out now like that. And so connecting those things that you're seeing and really thinking about how it connects to yourself. So we're connecting it back to yourself because ultimately yourself is the thing that, that we want to magnify. We want to show that in the work, right? Um, so this is, this is really great. So that's like question two. How do all these things that we've just written about, these things that you're noticing, how does it relate to your life right now? You'd be surprised um, 
if you start answering this and start looking at it, it really, there's like a, there's like a through line and it's helpful to have that. It, it's part of your story. It really creates momentum when you understand what you need as a human being. Like that's what's happening in your art. It's you're fill, fulfilling unmet needs in yourself. And I don't know what it is for everyone, you know, but check it out. It's kind of interesting um, how these things uh, show up. And I assure you, you know, in six months, it's going to be really different. And you think you start telling yourself the old story, but it no longer relates to where you are right now. So that's pretty interesting. Um, hey, hey, Glenda, uh, Christine, Steve, good to see you from Canada. All these cold places, I imagine it's really cold. It's quite cold here today. Um, so, um, yeah, so again, that first thing, putting out the work, asking yourself, what's working here? What's get really specific? Second thing is, is connecting what is working to your circumstance. Why? Who are you? What are you trying to do? How is it showing up in your life? Why is it showing up in your life? Understanding that connection between your art and your life and, and really connecting that through line. Um, when you get that clarity a little bit, and I'm sort of adding this to these questions, is when you get clear on, you know, what are those really potent things that are working, do more of them right? Double down on those things. What I did, you know, and I do every year is by getting more clear about what, you know, like just having this conversation last night with my friend, Steve, um, who saw, he saw something I posted on Instagram and he, he reached out to me and he was talking about it. That's now I'm, if it's fresh in my mind, it's like, I want to stay, I want to stay in that more intuitive state for me. I'm just talking for me. And so now, today, when I go paint, I'm not going to mess around with the way I typically do things. I'm going to just go right into trying to be in this place to keep that trend going, because that's what's important. And what happens? The, you get that kind of work easier. It happens faster. I don't need to spend four or five hours, three hours, doing what I normally do to get the same kind of results. I already know the results I want to get. I'm, I'm seeing them and I want to do more of them. So, you know, so it's kind of amazing. You can let go of some of the way you were working before or some of the ideas you had to just do the things that are starting to work for you, um, that resonate for you. And again, you don't, no one knows what those are. You, you get, to, but, but by writing it down, um, and looking at the past will start getting some clarity for you. And this is how you get better at working. This is how you get, you know, turn two hours, uh, make it the equivalent of six hours. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not always that you have to work so long and so hard to get an amazing outcome. Um, so that's really, really important is letting go of those other things that you're, they're typical ways of working. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so the third, the third thing is, um, and this is a little different. Um, once you've kind of looked at all this, take a moment and think about and try to imagine, and it's more of a felt sense. And I'll be curious, you know, let me know if this works for you. Um, imagine your work in three years. Try to picture, just telegraph ahead. Three, where is this work going? What does it look like? Try to picture that in your mind about what, what is it? What does that work look like? Um, it's not, it's, and if it's felt, what does it feel like? That's where I start first. What does the work feel like? What would it feel like in three years? What would feel amazing to feel that like what would it feel like can you picture it and sometimes you can't um but often you already know it's so interesting and and this is something that we don't do we think we're just it's just this big question mark not that you have to plan it 
But if you ever want to just, just get a sense of this and jot it down, it might be that by looking at, you know, but you have to do it after you look at where your work is now, what you kind of love, you know, what, what you want to carry forth in the day. Um, how does it relate to who you are now? And then what does it look like? Where are you going? Who are you going to be in three years? What could happen? What do you want to happen? What would feel expansive? And I, I use that word because that's the feeling that we want to get you to. We want, we want it like, that's what you identify in the future. You can kind of, it's a little scary. It's a little out of reach probably, you know, it's not totally predictable. There's an openness to it, but you can feel it and getting in practice with this, um, helps you if you start to get a sense of it a little bit you'd be surprised how quickly this shows up and here's why because when we're let's say you picture you know you you want to make color field paintings and maybe your work's really different right now maybe you want to make it bigger and more colorful and bigger areas of color i'm just making this up you know and you envision to yourself that it's like yeah bigger and more open co field, color fields. So today, let's say you go to your studio and you're working and you make a mark, maybe you pick up a bigger brush and you do an area that's a little bigger, more expansive. What happens is you, um, you notice that, you recognize it, you're reminded of the thing that you were projecting and thinking about earlier. It's like you've kind of seen it before, so you say yes to that. Instead of saying, oh, that doesn't feel, that's different than what I've normally done. You see, everything that we do, we tie it back to what we're always doing, and that's the problem. So we're trying to rejigger this. Does that make sense? We're trying to get familiar with this cool place we're going, and then when we touch it in our work, even by accident, you know, then we recognize and it's like, oh, wait, wait, there's something there. I'm going to do more of that. I'm going to pay attention to that. I'm going to try this. I'm going to, there it is. There it is. That's what I was feeling earlier. That's kind of it. I'm going to do more of that. And you'd be amazed at how this moves you along. Um, I don't know if that, that makes sense. You know, I'm, I don't know why I'm picturing Rui right now, but I know we had conversations like this um, in the past when we were talking about your work. You know, it's like, you can feel where you want to take it. And that was something that she was struggling with. It was in a certain place and she wanted it to be in this other place. She knew the feeling of it. And, and the conversation is that you want to stay connected to that feeling, even if the work's not there yet, because the work will fill in. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it's super cool. It's, it's, you know, we're all, we're all making stuff that doesn't exist you know, there's no roadmap for any of us. And, and I don't want there to be a roadmap. And, and there isn't, my roadmap's not your roadmap. And, you know, we don't, there isn't a, there isn't a clear map, but these are ways to move along and, and go quicker and get further along and make progress easier. Right. And it's, it's so cool. It's just how you're thinking about it. So, um, I'll, I'll summarize these points again, you know, first question, what have I, what have I made that I love? You know, what parts of what have I made have I loved? Sometimes it's just a corner of a painting. Put them out, look at that, review the last six months, get a sense of that, make some notes, just a few notes. Think about it, write it down. Second, how do the parts that I love, how are the things that I'm seeing, how does that connect to me? Why? Why do I like those now? Why am I making those now? Why is this up for me now? Why are bright colors up for me now? You know, you're like, it's almost like someone's asking you like, well, why, why are you doing this? You know, well, this feels really exciting for me because the rest of my life, it's really calm. And so I want to be more wild or whatever it is, or maybe things are crazy right now and you're doing more of a, a quiet palette. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. And the reasons are your own. But think about that. Connect you always to what you're making. Go back to that and connect that to what. So that's that second question. And then the third one is taking those two answers to the first two questions 
embodying it, getting a sense of that feeling and projecting that feeling ahead three years. What does it feel like in three years? It's kind of like, oh, well, it's gonna be way more X. It's gonna be, it's gonna be this. You can kind of get a sense of it and write that down and get some picture of that. And then when you're working today or tomorrow or whatever, if you have these ideas in your head, um, you will recognize the path to your progression to where you want to go quicker and it'll be more noticeable. It's kind of cool. And I know for those of you who have done CVP, um, we have, I sort of go through a, 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 a sort of exercise where you kind of do this, but it's basically what I'm sharing with you. Um, so you can use this at any time. It doesn't have to be like you're in the dark, just trying things and wandering around. You can start gaining momentum and start getting direction for yourself. So anyway, this is a cool thing. And I'm going to be touching on this a little bit in the free art workshop that's coming up. And I know a lot of you guys know this already. Um, uh, it's artlifefree.com. Is that right, uh, AJ? Artlifefree, yeah, artlifefree.com. Um, we'll put it in the comments here. But um, that's going to be starting next week, um, less than a week. So that's going to be really cool. But um, it's the, the information I'm going to be sharing with you is the same kind of stuff. It's like uh, things that you can do that can really um, that can really speed you along and can really help you along. I love stuff like this where you can get some information, you know, like these three ideas here and get for yourself. And then when you look at your work, again, you can see it differently. That's the whole game with this, is seeing the work differently and applying that information and going, oh, oh, oh my God, I just made this better, <laughs> you know? And that's what I love, you know? For me, I just, it was so many years of just doing the same thing and just kind of moving a little ahead, falling back, moving ahead, little, it was just really slow. And it doesn't have to be. So anyway, um, I just thought I'd share this in here. Um, I'm so, great, Debbie. Uh, yeah, it really is simple. I mean, you know, connecting yourself to your work, of course, of course that's it. But it's amazing how we think outside of ourselves all the time. Like our work is this thing that we're doing when we have time. You know, it's really separate from us and our life. What I do and what I, how I teach is you getting back hold of this and 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 putting it back in the in, in the driver's seat getting you in the driver's seat of it and connecting it to everything you do so the art is just this residual expression of your life um, and then it gets really good and then it gets really unique and that's where things start getting interesting because it you know it has more it, it gets seen it gets noticed people are drawn to it you're more interested in it because it gets more and more unique so Anyway, okay, well, that was, that was the idea, um, and that's something that I'm kind of weaving in a little bit into this workshop, some of the ideas of, with it, so I just thought I'd share that in here. Um, okay, well, listen, you guys, uh, Marnie, thanks, thanks for being here. Oh, Laura, hey, thanks for being here. Laura's always uh, floating around. I appreciate putting that link there. Um, cool. Um, Wonderful. All right. Well, I will, I will see you guys. Um, again, um, we're doing it in the, in that other, uh, pop-up, um, free workshop, Facebook group. It's going to be awesome. Um, I'm excited to, uh, to do the live portions of these workshops and the, all the information that Facebook group, by the way, opens up tomorrow, which is kind of cool. We're opening it up early, you know, really, but I will be going in there. I'm going to be going into this Facebook group every single day at noon, just so you know. I'll be sharing stuff, you know, because um, there's some things I want to go over, just some ideas and tips and stuff before the workshop even starts, you know. Um, so I'll be going in there um, moving forward um, once you come in uh, every day at noon. So it just worked out. I looked at it. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be there every single day uh, through the workshop and everything. So anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. And I um, hope you have an awesome day today, and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye, guys.